Poker has a tremendous amount of terminology, and some terms get very, very confused, and the definitions get a little muddy over the years. And one of these terms is definitely range advantage. So today I want to talk about what this term actually means and how you can actually use it. Good morning. How are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and today we're going to talk about range advantage. And first and foremost, let's just define range advantage and get that out of the way. So this term should ideally mean that one range is more favorable or profitable than another range, regardless of the range's overall pot equity. However, the issue comes into play that when most people use the term range advantage, they're really just talking about one range having more pot equity than another range. And this isn't really the best usage or way of thinking about range advantage, and that's simply because pot equity is often not the most important aspect in determining whether one range is more profitable than another range. GTO Solver Analysis teaches us that it's very possible for one range to be better than another range, even when that range has less direct pot equity. A perfect example of this is a polarized range being better than a condensed range as a general rule. And we can prove this by pulling up a solve and going through it together. So let's pull up the perfect polarization model, and here is the overall model in case you're unfamiliar with it. Okay, for this model, it is a heads up pot on the river. There's a $100 in the middle and $100 for each player effective. The out of position player is the aggressor. They have a polarized range, which means their range is full of value hands and bluffs only. Their value hands will always win at showdown and their bluffs will always lose at showdown. While the person who is in position has a range of pure bluff catchers, their bluff catchers will always beat the other person's bluffs, and their bluff catchers will always lose when their opponent has a value hand. So very simple basic situation. So if we pull this model up in GTO Plus and poke around, we might notice right off the bat looking at the aggressor's overall range, their inflection point on the river, they have 47% equity before they bet check. Just as soon as we get to the river, they have 47% equity right that moment. And on the contrary, that means that the defender has 53% equity. So it might be tempting to say that the defender has range advantage in this scenario. However, if we look at the expected value of each player, we see a very different story unfold quickly. Notice that if we instead look at the EV of this situation, the EV of the aggressor, even though they do have a lower equity, their EV is actually 70.59 which is significantly higher than the defenders. Given all this, it's arguably more accurate to say that the aggressor actually has the range advantage here, since their equity is distributed more favorably, i.e. it has a polarized distribution, which translates into higher earnings. And to be fair, holding the nutted equity distribution also confers a big advantage to a range. This is because having the nutted equity distribution allows us to construct polarized ranges more cleanly. And in case you're new to the term nutted equity distribution, this just simply means that one range contains hands that are so strong the other range can never beat them, at least not without additional cards being dealt. So essentially if you look at two ranges and one person can have the nuts and the other person cannot, the person who can have the nuts would be said to have the nutted equity distribution. Now most of the time when people are comparing ranges or thinking about range advantages, they typically focus on the strongest hands within those ranges, and that's fair, but there's also a lot of conversation we had about range advantages that can occur between the middle and even bottom side of the equity distributions. To visualize this, let's pull up another solve again using GTO plus. And in this model, we're going to continue to identify the polarized range with the person who is out of position and the aggressor, and the person who is in position to be the defender with more of a condensed range of hands. And one of the things I really like to do to visualize this is to look at the equity distribution of both ranges on the same graph at the same time. And the best way for me to do this is to pull this over to Flopzilla. So we can go to Flopzilla Pro when we have Flopzilla open, go to export to Flopzilla, and then pop it right open. And and here we go. And you notice it puts us right here in multiplayer mode. And with the aggressor or the person with the polarized range selected, you notice if we go over here to equity graph, we can see both ranges right here very, very easily. The person we have selected right this moment, the aggressor is in the blue and the lightish green is the other person. And if we were to flick over to them, notice the green gets selected, the blue gets a little muted. So it allows you to very, very quickly tell which person you currently have selected at the moment. So if we look closely at this graph, we can notice a couple of different things. First and foremost, the aggressor 
Spencer has the nutted equity distribution right this moment because if you were to zoom in right there, they have the largest amount of nuttish hands in their range. And in this very, very top section, you notice that the equity is higher for the aggressor the entire way through in kind of this top section of the range. And it's really nice here in Flobzilla because you can hover over everything and you can see exactly which hand is selected right that moment. So hovering right here, we see eight six of diamonds, which is a flush on this board. And you can do this the entire way down, which is very, very helpful and a nice feature. So when we're looking at the overall buckets here, looking at a top of the range, middle of the range, bottom of the range, I know some people will say, well, what is the exact breakdown of what's in the top? Is it the top 20% of hands, top 10% of hands, top 33% of hands? Don't look at it so aggressively and so tight. Instead, rather just look at the overall chart and you can get a pretty broad picture. So looking at kind of the top side of the range, we notice that the aggressor is definitely winning all of that, right? Higher equity all the way through. We look at it through the middle. Again, we still have a very, very large aggression uh, favored range right this moment in terms of equity. And once we get to the bottom, we notice things flip, right? And this is kind of what happens with a polarized range. You notice all of a sudden these are much, much lower equity hands and the defender is actually going to take an equity edge once we get into the bottom side of the overall equity distribution. And this should make a lot of sense because the aggressor has a polarized range. Once they get into the bottom part of their range, they're going to have stuff that has very, very little equity, essentially just pure, pure bluffs. And because the defender has a lot of bluff catchers in their range, well, they're going to have more equity than the aggressor, and it's not uncommon to see this kind of equity flip at some point, usually towards the middle-ish, bottom-ish part of the overall range distribution. And for what it's worth, it is totally possible that one person could have the nutted equity distribution right this moment, but the other person actually is doing far better because they have deeper advantage deeper in the ranges. So while I'm sure some of this just seemed like pure techno babble, it's very important to understand exactly how two ranges stack up because this gives us a more reliable way of predicting what a GTO strategy is going to look like, along with the associated frequencies and also bet sizes. So again, the big takeaway from this entire conversation is to one, be able to define range advantage more clearly and not just look at raw pot equity as the only definer of which range has range advantage. Being able to think about ranges at different intervals from looking at buckets like a top, middle, and bottom side of the bucket, understanding what a nutted equity distribution looks like, and again, how all of this wraps together to not just just look at one singular piece when comparing ranges, but look at the holistic picture overall. And if you're interested in going even deeper on concepts just like this, definitely make sure to pick up my book, GTO Gems. It's available now on Amazon or directly via Red Chip Poker by going to redchippoker.com slash gems. Pick up your copy today and definitely make sure to take advantage of this. It's priced extremely well and essentially there to make sure that you have actionable insights that have come from years and years of solver analysis. Instead of you doing thousands of solves yourself and trying to figure out what the heck this solver is telling you, we distilled it all down into actionable insights you can start using immediately. Again, GTO Gems is the name of the book. Pick it up today and I can't wait to hear what you think of it. As always, thank you so much for hanging out today. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. And if you enjoyed the video, can you give it a thumbs up on the way out? I'd massively appreciate it. Otherwise, I'll see you back shortly with a brand new video. In the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.